Aloha folks, I'm Chevy, meteorologist at the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Honolulu, co-located with the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. And today I want to talk to you about all this heat that we've been experiencing. What's causing it, what you can do to help the atmosphere. Uh, we'll talk about the records that we've broken because quite a few. Let's start off with that. Okay, the first thing I want to make uh, a distinction about is uh, the meteorologist and the climatologist. What's the difference? Well, everybody here in my office at the Weather Service forecast office in the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, we're all meteorologists, which means we look at the weather, what's going on right now, and we look at the future, give you your forecast, right? That's what meteorologists do. Climatologists look at all the past data, all right, and see trends and what's going on, what they think they can project for the future. Now, they look at all of that. So most of this data, if not all of it that I'm talking about today about climate change, came from the NOAA Pacific region uh, climate people, okay? Uh, I have conversations with them this week and got some information on climate change because they're the climate change experts, right? I mean, we know a little bit about it, but uh, when we want answers for climate change, we talk to them. But let's talk about the heat first, okay? Because a lot of heat out there. 183 records have broken at the four airports, Lahui, Honolulu, Kahului, and Hilo. Okay, 70 in Kahului, 22 in Hilo. Now on the right, you see, now I wanna mention that all these temperatures, these records were either tied or broken, okay? So either or, that's still 183, that's almost unheard of, right? In these temperatures over here, how, what was the highest temperature, and all this data is from April 1st until September 16th, right? So what was the highest temperature they saw at each of these locations? 91 in Lahui, 95 in Honolulu, 97 in Kahului, those poor folks everybody, I guess, 90 in Hilo, that's ridiculously warm, right? Um, so what's causing all of this, right? Why are we so much warmer this year? In the last five years, to be honest with you, warmer sea surface temperatures, absolutely a contributor. You know, 71% of the earth is covered with water. We know this, right? You know this from grade school, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that it, you're heating up that water, 71% of what's covering the earth, you're probably gonna heat up everything else. The winds blow over the warm water, Okay, you get it, right? So we've had a disruption in trade winds. I'm sure a lot of people have noticed that. Uh, so all lines, uh, disruption in trade winds, so you don't move that warm air off the uh, islands. Uh, you know, so that's been a problem. And less rain, so when you get rain, you get evaporative cooling in the air, and we've had less rain, so you don't get that. But the sea surface temperatures, that's probably the biggest culprit of, you know, the, the, we're talking about climate change, that's why everything is warming so much. And these aren't the sea surface temperatures here, this map, but it's how much above normal are the sea surface temperatures around Hawaii uh, than normal. So anything blue is pretty much normal, light blue, and anything in the yellows, oranges, and reds, that's a couple degrees above. And a couple degrees makes a big difference. And look where all the warm temperatures are. Even if we get trade winds, folks, it's, it's blowing right over the islands, uh, blowing over the warmer water zone to the islands, so, uh, although we're in neutral El Nino, La Nina conditions, we still have above normal temperatures in and around Hawaii and then in the Central Pacific. The good thing is we haven't had a lot of tropical cyclone development because they feed off of, you know, the warmer waters, sea surface waters. But climatologists also need sea surface temperatures, salinity data, all that up underneath the surface. You know, if they only had sea surface temperatures, which they had for years, it's hard to see what's going on in the whole ocean. It would be like meteorologists only having the surface data from, you know, data from the surface. We have weather balloons go up 100,000, 120,000 feet. So we have data all the way up through the atmosphere. So for years, they only had sea surface temperatures. Now they have this Argo program where they, they take these little robots. So if you see one of these out in the water, leave it alone. It's out there for scientific reasons. It goes down to pretty good depths. And they even got one now, uh, these particular ones, um, uh, it, it would go down so far, if it went too deep, it would implode because of the pressure, the immense pressure. But they do have some that can go all the way to the bottom of the ocean. And you know what? Uh, we're serious about collecting data, no, it is, right? And so are these climatologists. I know meteorologists collect a lot of data, but take a look at this from NOAA. As of 9 December 2018, 3,952 of these robots are out in the ocean and equally dispersed, as you can see. So that's collecting all that data and giving them more and more data every year to figure out what's going on, not just at the surface of the oceans, but below, because that makes a big difference. Now, this is a busy chart, but pretend this is, you know, 
one of the islands and, and you know of course the ocean water now if you see a blue arrow going down and a red arrow going up whatever the uh, situation is next to it that means it's kind of imbalanced but if you see a red arrow going up that means it's rising for example surface air temperature is rising a lot of that's because of you know sea surface temperatures rising but it's rising carbon dioxide concentration has been rising for years and carbon dioxide uh you know, how do they know it's not just a cyclical thing and it's only happened for the last 100 years or so? Well, they're taking ice core samples and they can see carbon-2, uh, a CO2 concentrations that were in the atmosphere in these ice core samples that go back tens, and thousands, tens of thousands of years ago, okay? And CO2, the amount of that in the atmosphere is directly proportional to how warm it is. And that's how they figure that out. So they can compare it to what's going on now and it's unprecedented how, how warm it's gotten and how much CO2 is in the air. The ocean heat content is rising. We talked about that. Rainfall is not changing. It's balanced. Uh, winds and waves are not really changing. Uh, sea surface temperatures, of course, are rising. I mentioned that. We're going to talk about some good news because I'm giving you a lot of bad news here. But this right here is down, but its base flow and streams are decreasing. That's still not good. Um, so a lot of this that's you know rising in this graphic is bad. Okay, <laughs> it's bad. So let's take a look at this. Why, why does the sea level rise? Well, you know, you've seen the videos of the glaciers melting. That adds water, of course, and causes the sea levels to rise. But, you know, the, the waters are warming, too. And anything that warms expands. So, you know, you have thermal expansion. That adds to it. Now, take a look at what I, I pulled here from NOAA. In 2012, NOAA scientists, mainly climatologists, I assume, conducted a review of global sea level rise projections and concluded that with high confidence greater than 90 percent that the global mean sea level will rise at least eight inches but no more than 6.6 feet now by 2100 now that's like quite a few years away okay so 6.6 feet probably going to be a problem to deal with could you imagine if it was that much higher eight inches would be a problem in itself but i think we could deal with it we don't want to deal with it okay we need to do more and more to stop this from happening 2100, I'm not, I don't think I'll be here unless they really get some, you know, uh, longevity for life uh, medicine going. But, you know, we're probably not going to be here, but you know what? Our kids are going to be here. Our grandkids are going to be here. So how about the temperature changes uh, between now and 2100? So take a look at this, and you can see these are observations, how much it's been rising. But from now until 2100, if we stay where we are, which means we're accelerating emissions, that means more and more cars, more and more CO2 getting pumped into the air. If we stay with that, it could rise 10, 11 degrees, okay? You don't want the sea surface. It's only risen a few degrees, a couple degrees in the last 100 years. You don't want it rising 11 degrees. Now, if we, if we stop accelerating and adding to the emissions, and we try to level them off and get lower emissions, it could be just maybe six degrees, which is still a lot, but it could be as few as a couple of degrees, okay? That's where we need to be. And what do we need to do? We need to start doing a lot, and I'm gonna give you some tips on what you can do to help, because you can, okay? We just, you can't leave it to the scientists. Everybody has to act, okay? Everybody, common people, politicians, scientists have to give you this information like we are. Take a look at this. This is a little bit of good news, okay? Because this, since 1970, this is a graphic of how many tropical cyclones we've had in our area. So the black are just tropical cyclones, you know, depression, storms, hurricanes. The red are which of these cyclones, tropical cyclones turned into hurricanes, and the green ones were the ones that turned into major hurricanes, category three, four, and five. Notice how we have these upward, you know, peaks, and then we have the valleys, and then another peak. 92, that was a Niki that when it hit Kauai, and we had a lot of uh, tropical cyclones. Then we had another valley, and then we get into another peak, 2015, remember that record year. All this is mostly attributed to El Nino and La Nina. So when we have the peaks, we have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, El Nino conditions, and then it, when it fades into La Nina or cooler than normal sea surface temperatures, we have the laws and then we have the peaks for El Nino. So all of this is mostly attributed to El Nino and La Nina uh, differences. And guess what? It's pretty much staying steady, if you'll notice that. I, I hope you can see that, but that's my point here. Since 1970, a lot of things are warming up, including the sea surface, um, you know, uh, even at depths, the sea uh, temperatures, the ocean temperatures, and the air is warming up, and the land and everything's warming up. But at least the tropical cyclone situation is, is pretty much the same. And I think the climatologists are projecting and hoping that, of course, that 
it's going to stay that way. Uh, this year, we, we thought we'd see, or our outlook, outlook was uh, more than average number of tropical cyclones. We've only seen a few, but we still have a couple more months, so we don't want to speculate on that. We'll see what happens. But we want it to be low, okay? We really do. So we're in neutral conditions, but you saw where the sea surface temperatures around Hawaii are, are warmer than normal. But this is a little bit of good news, and we hope that the tropical cyclones um, just, just stay with the normal cyclical behavior with El Nino and La Nina. What can you do? A lot of things, simple things. How about a renew, reusable water bottle? Bring a bag to the store. You know, those cloth bags are great. If you get a plastic bag in the store, I'm glad they got this new, these newer laws where they're charging you for the bags. Keeps people from getting them, and that keeps me. I know it's 15 cents, but it adds up, right? And if you do have to get that, because you forget your bag, which I do sometimes, uh, reuse that bag, okay? Renewables, renewables, renewables. I can't stress that enough. Green your commute. Now, I realize that Hawaii doesn't quite have the infrastructure that we want if we want an electric car, okay? I would love to have an electric car, but you know, if you live in an apartment or a condo, you know, you don't have a charger there, right? Uh, if you have a house, you can get a charger at home. But a lot of people, especially on Oahu, live in apartments, all across the islands, living apartments or condos, so it's hard to see where the chargers are. There's not a lot of them out and about. You can get a hybrid and rely on gas in case you can't find a charger, but you still need a charger, right, if you wanna uh, save the environment. So it's kinda hard to green your commute, but you can bike ride, and people do that. I live close to work. You, you can't imagine how much CO2 I've cut down just because I'm two miles from work, okay? I can even walk if I wanted to. Use energy wisely, save money too. Uh, Eco has these nice reports they started putting out a few months ago where you can see where your energy is going. I know a lot of it's going for air conditioner for a lot of folks because we've been so warm and it's gonna to continue to be warm, I hate to say, uh, through September and probably into October. Uh, but you can see where your energy is going with those reports. Is it in the kitchen? Is it you know in, in the bedrooms? Wherever, it breaks it down by percentage. And maybe you can realize I'm, I'm using too much uh, in the kitchen or use a microwave instead of the oven. I know, something to use less energy. Consume less, waste less. Divert from fossil, divest and divert from fossil fuels, okay? No more of this burning oil, we gotta stop that. I know they're doing more at landfills to convert a lot of that, a high percentage of that, uh, to energy, which is great. The less it goes in the landfills, the better. So, I mean, you gotta look at stuff when you throw it away. Is this gonna go in the landfill? Can it go to recycle? Okay, recycle, recycle, recycle. I mean, recycling is huge. I mean, just, just start saving plastic bottles and see how much you don't put in the trash, how less often you take out the trash, okay? Uh, because you're, you're recycling. It's just a little bit of effort, they even pay you for it. So, um, you know, do that because they're charging you for the, the bottles uh, when you leave the store. All right, so once again, I'm Chevy, the meteorologist here at the National Weather Service Central Pacific Hurricane Center. If you want more information on this, just Google um, Pacific Region NOAA Climate, and you should get our Pacific Region office out on Fort Island, uh, their climate division, and the climatologists are really the experts on climate change and everything. Like I said, we focus meteorologists do on, on current weather in the, in the future. Climatologists look at all this data, and they, they provided me with just about all of this information here. Uh, that's where I rely on my information. You get more if you do that. Go to their webpage. You can always go to our webpage for a lot of information, even some of this stuff. And you can uh, suggest comments. You can give us a call here. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, look us up on the webpage. Uh, check us out. And of course, we have your forecast 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, 365 a year. We are always here, folks. 24 hours a day, someone's here doing your forecast, looking at your weather. So let's be mindful of everything I said, okay? Because we don't want to deal with this heat. You know, we're on, well, at, at this pace, we're going to have the, 2019 might be the warmest on record ever. And we're talking about back to the 1800s. Keeping records, that's a long time. And on pace for the last five years to be the warmest ever, okay? So you know where I'm going. You saw the trend. You saw the data I just showed you. Uh, we have to do something about this. If you said we'd have it done, Everything would be 100% renewable by next week. I'd say that's still too late because we're, we're taking too long to do it. I think, Hiko, I, I saw the other day where they want to be 100% renewable by 2045. I'd like to see that be, you know, 2025, even 2015. I wish it was a couple of years ago. But we have to do what we can with what we got. And we don't want our kids to have to suffer with the consequences of climate change. So do what you can. Try to use these tips the best you can. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know.